So now's when we're actually going to jump into a sample application here and simulate some traces. So we're going to be interested primarily in two types of traces. One is going to be for page load, and we're going to investigate um, what should be a slow page load here. So let's reload our application of our tool store. You can see there was some latency in the page load. You can see that a payload was sent to Sentry um, with the transaction information for that page load. And the other trace of interest is going to be a checkout. So we're going to add some of these very expensive tools uh, to our cart here, and we're going to attempt to check out. And what you're seeing now is some latency associated with the checkout, but also an error occurred and a nice a nice uh, widget that Sentry provides for collecting user feedback that could also be associated with this issue. Some more payloads were sent to Sentry. We're going to investigate the contents of those payloads. But for now, keep in mind two traces, one page load, one slow page load that we're going to investigate, and also a checkout flow that we've manually instrumented that's going to be very similar to the documentation that we already walked through. But let's jump into the performance dashboard finally. Great. So now we're within our performance dashboard. There's a number <clears throat> of helpful visualizations here and other items that come out of the box with Sentry's performance. And I think at the forefront are, are our web vitals. And I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on these as part of the performance conversation, um, briefly at least. So these are the web vitals that are, are formed and recommended stand, beginning to be standardized by Google. So largest conical paint, first conical paint, uh, first input delay, uh, in addition to others that are provided with some transaction or as a part of transactions. Uh, but first and foremost, you can jump into any of these uh, web vitals and track the P75 over time for that particular web vital. P75 uh, being the general um, benchmark uh, that Google recommends. Well, they, they recommend benchmark or sort of various P75 levels, but we're tracking the P75 um, as the best representative sample of our, of our large conical paint data in this case. You can zoom in on peaks and valleys through our interactive time series here and all the transactions that comprise this data will update accordingly. So you can sort of get to the bottom of any, um, of any increases in say P75 values that you're noticing for whatever time period that you're looking through. But we're going to sort of stay focused on transactions and, and continue to go through some of these visualizations. And I'm going to touch on a couple more helpful ones that we provide here. So right now we're focused on front end transactions, <clears throat> specifically page load operations here. And we're aggregating data across all of our page load operations currently for the last seven days. And we have a couple of helpful visualizations for this too. So we have a histogram here where you can get a general sense of the central tendency for our LCP. Uh, you can also see LCP over time looking at any, zooming in on any sort of slice here uh, of any peaks or any dips in LCP. We also offer some help, other helpful visualizations here such as throughput, um, but LCP is really the measurement that we're focused on for assessing um, the overall uh, end user experience um, for our, uh, that's represented um, as a part of our page load transactions. You always get a sense of the raw number of events for the particular time horizon that you've selected here. So we know that we're looking at around 38K events for the last seven days, 38K transactions. And as we continue to scroll down, you'll start to see probably one of the, um, what we're interested in most for this discussion today on distributed tracing and, your, and that being our transaction categories. So in this case, we have one transaction category for our page load here. So this is the page load we just simulated that loaded all of our tools. This naming convention, again, this has been auto-instrumented for us. So the name is taken from the window.location. Um, depending on, we, we talked about React Router a little bit. This is where you'd see parameterized transaction names as well. If you're using that integration, we have a couple helpful overview um, statistics for web vitals pertaining to these front-end transaction categories. So you can see generally um, uh, LCP, FID, FCP, uh, the unique users um, associated with these tr this transaction category in addition to user misery. And user misery is kind of a good way to get a quick indication of the proportion of your users that are experiencing transaction times um, four times greater than a threshold you specified. So in this case, we've specified 300 milliseconds as the acceptable threshold um, for this particular transaction, for this particular page load um, category transaction. 
And you can see that a majority of our users are experiencing uh, latencies greater than 1200 milliseconds here. So not so great. Perhaps you want to investigate this category and jump into the actual detail. <clears throat> okay, awesome. So quick orientation, we're within the tool store transaction category. We're looking at all of the data aggregated across all of our page loads um, that have been auto-instrumented for us. And now we can start to use some of Sentry's really helpful tools to um, start building profiles for transaction types that or transactions we're interested in within this particular category. Um, and the first way you can do that is this really helpful filter dropdown. So we have different types. You may or may have not, may or may, you may have not noticed that we do have operations that you can specify uh, when you're manually instrumenting, but we also have operations that are auto-instrumented for you. And you can use these to sort of start building up a profile or building up um, transaction characteristics that you're interested in or filtering based on them, I guess is really the better way to put it. So for instance, if you're interested in all of our slow HTTP operations across these page load transactions, you can sort of filter by that operation, that particular operation type. Now we're looking at slow HTTP operations. So the 95th percentile here, if you wanted to look at outliers, you can now do that as well. You can use any of these filters. So if you're interested in outliers for resources being loaded, outliers for database queries, which perhaps we'll look at uh, in a few minutes, you can use these helpful filters right off the bat to sort of explore um, this particular sample of your data. Before we jump into some of these actual outliers for page load, I wanna highlight that you also still have web vitals represented for you for this particular transaction category. You have status breakdowns related to are related to this transaction category as well. So if you're interested in exceptions or transactions within the page load that, in, that, um, that have exceptions associated with them, in this case, you can check out, you can add internal errors to your filters, and then you'll be sort of looking at that subset of the data. But for now, uh, let's jump into one of these page load transactions and see what we get at the span level. Okay, awesome. So first and foremost, we're still within our front end project. We get a nice breakdown next to our waterfall here of operations contributing um, most to the latency observed here. Now, because we're already sort of filtering on HTTP, we might have had that assumption going into this data, but this is a good way in the case that you're not filtering to um, get a quick and early indication in your decision making and your triaging process as to what operations might be contributing <clears throat> to some deficiencies here. So if you were to call, recall that diagram, user memory, um, to the best of our abilities here, we're remembering that you know, traces can be, or transactions rather, can be thought of as trees of spans. And we have our initial span here representing the page load. And then we have all of these spans that were auto-instrumented for us um, via the SDK. So browsers um, fetching resources. We have React component lifecycle events here. And as we continue to scroll down, we can start to see we have a culprit here that might have been contributing um, to that latency we observed in our page load. We could have gotten here quicker via the operation breakdown, but now we're here anyways, just sort of as an exercise going through the span level detail. We can open this span up, and this is where we can get some more helpful information. So related, mostly related to, um, you can look at durations here, methods, URLs associated with this particular operation. But what's most interesting for this conversation is the child transaction here. So Sentry is going to give us a nice preview here or a nice indication that we have another transaction that's being kicked off as a part of this request from our front end service. If we wanted to jump directly into this transaction, we can do so simply by clicking this button. But I wanted to point out that you also have the trace navigator here at the outset. So if you're interested in getting directly to the child, or just interested in another pathway to get to the child uh, transaction, you can click on this button as well, and we'll be taken directly into our backend now. So let's orient ourselves again. We have um, the project here. We can see the trace navigator. There's nothing further, um, no child events here. We can see the status associated with this backend transaction. We get nice contextual tag details with the transactions in Sentry, or sorry, uh, as a part of the transaction within Sentry. And we can start to sort of repeat that process of looking at the operation details. It appears that we have some manual instrumentation here related to DB function calls. We can go into the span level detail, see that we have a span being created for the incoming request to our backend. 
we can see that we have another span for this get all tools functionality in our database that has three sort of child spans associated with it. Some auto instrumentation here, it looks like for um, some popular data, database ORMs. And we also, as a part of that, are getting some instrumentation around the exact query that was run here that appears um, at least for the purposes within this span to have taken a, a very long time. Um, so in effect, we've traced a, a latency we observed on the front end into the span level detail on the front end, into the span level detail on the back end. We've used a bunch of helpful filters and tools along the way. We're within an outlier right now. And we've effectively identified this as resulting from an inefficient database query. In this case, this is more of an artificial uh, latency that's been added to this query, but this could represent an N plus one database query or some other um, large table join. Um, uh, the root causes, of course, aren't necessarily important for this conversation. It's important to, to know that we, we utilized Sentry to trace this from the front end to the back end and used all the contextual information in our triaging process as well. Um, I think this is uh, maybe another good point to pause. However, I wanted to show one more perhaps, um, or the, the second trace that we wanted to illustrate uh, that we manually instrumented uh, being our checkout flow. So I guess before we pause, let me jump into that um, trace really quickly. And then oh, let's get into admin JavaScript here. Back off of that. Let's jump into our other front end transactions. And now you're going to see the checkout that we named ourselves. So that's not the same name that you saw in the documentation, but now this is a manually instrumented transaction within Sentry. We'll get similar, uh, these aren't web vitals necessarily, but these are the relevant latency percentiles associated with this checkout transaction. Starting on our front end, users, user misery, all the same sort of helpful overviews we've gone through. We can dive into the detail of this as well. <clears throat> okay, so a lot of the same orientation here. Um, one thing I didn't mention in our other trace was how you can use the query bar. So if you're interested in um, pairing this data down to a specific browser type. So if we're interested in Chrome-based browsers, we can do so. Uh, if we're also interested in looking at perhaps um, the outliers for loading resources when it comes to this or the outliers for, well, we did HTTP last time and that's probably the most relevant for this conversation. Um, but now we can start to look at slow HTTP operations for this manually instrumented checkout transaction category. If we were to jump into one of these outlier cases, actually, I kind of want to jump into another one just to illustrate, uh, let's jump into recent transactions. Okay, so you're gonna notice something immediately different here, something that we referenced at the beginning of this presentation, both errors and performance or related performance data are now being captured together within Sentry. So that is what is, that's what Sentry is indicating to us in various ways um, on the screen right now for this particular transaction. You can see in the Trace Navigator, Sentry is telling us that an exception was captured on the front end at the start of this transaction. We have a child transaction as well. And we also have an indication that an exception occurred within that child transaction too. So there's a lot to look at right now when it comes to triaging the issues we experience with checkout. So let's start on the front end right now in our front end transaction and see what we can deduce to see if we can get to a root cause um, in this service. So if you click on the root span here or the initial span here, you can see some previews of the error detail uh, associated with this particular transaction. You have the option to jump directly into this um, exception or this event detail. And if we do so, now we're sort of gonna orient ourselves again. So we're within the exception detail that occurred during the transaction. And we provide helpful ways to jump back into the actual transaction in case you need to sort of switch back and forth uh, as you're triaging this issue. But you get all that helpful contextual information to accelerate your decision-making and your triaging process here that you're used to with century errors, but now within the context, larger context of transactions and, and debugging across services. So suspect commits, ownership, suggested assignees, tags here, unminified stack trace. So all this is available to us. Of course, if we look at this stack trace, this error message is rather ambiguous. This could be something we could work better on in the front end, 
but it appears that we need to dive deeper to get to the root cause of this. Uh, we know that an issue exists in the back or at least in a trial transaction. So why don't we jump via this helpful tool within the actual uh, issue into the transaction on our back end? Okay, so all the same detail we saw on the front end, we have an exception here. Sentry has many helpful indications of that. <clears throat> we can either jump into the span level detail, the operation breakdown, seems like process order. We have some manual instrumentation around a function here, process order that's contributing to a lot of the latency observed. We don't know if this issue is related. There might be two things going on here. There might be one, but we can then start to triage the actual exception or look into the actual exception in the same way we did so on the front end. Follow this into the exception detail. Utilize all that's available to us, including the stack trace. In this case, it appears we have something on the back end related to not having enough inventory for the request we made starting on the front end. Perhaps this could be handled better on the back end. Perhaps this could be handled better on the front end. Uh, you'll also notice the name of, uh, you know, you have the file name and the actual function that was called. Um, notice that it's process order. So it seems like what we noticed in the transaction level detail is related. We can jump back into the actual back end transaction. But we've effectively reached the conclusion or a root cause at this point um, that we had an issue during this manually instrumented checkout transaction. It's related to this function that has some latency associated with it. So you can see how something ambiguous on the front end, we we're able to either communicate with our back end team or handle this ourselves in a full stack context by tracing it across services into the back end and utilizing Sentry's exception detail. <clears throat>